Assalamu alaikum. What's good, everyone? So today I want to talk about the addiction crisis. We're all addicted to something. We all have things in our lives that become addictions. And addictions are one of the hardest things to fight off. We could be addicted to sugar, and it can be so hard that our bodies are literally screaming at ourselves and are craving that sugar so much that we get headaches, that we feel nauseous. People could be addicted to coffee, caffeine. It's addicting. It's a drug that helps us stay more alert and focused. And just the smell of it, when you're missing, it can give you headaches. You can go through crashes. You can feel so tense and awful. And also, nowadays, we can be addicted to anything. We can be addicted to our phones. We can be addicted to what we see behind our phones. And again, all of this dopamine, all this constant glimmer and glamour into our, into our brains can affect us so much. But how do we deal with these addictions? How do we stop doing things we know we have to stop doing? Islamically, how do you do it? And realistically and spiritually, how do you do it? Dealing with addictions in Islam combines a sense of spirituality, psychological ability, and mental and emotional ability. One of the things that Islam does help with is addictions, and how it does it is really important. Something that I've learned Islamically that has really changed my outlook on being able to give up something or get away from an addiction is that it's said that when you give up something for the sake of Allah, Allah will then in turn replace it with something better. So if you give up an addiction, you give up something in life that you know is harming you and you give it up, not because you want to give it up, but because you know it's the best option for you, Allah, your family, whatever it is, whatever your reason is, when you do that and you give it up, Allah then will replace it with something better. So you give up the drinking, you give up the smoking, you give up this, Allah will replace it with something else that's even better than what you gave up. And whether it be something simple, like you gave up the smoking for peace, you gave up pornography for clarity, you gave up this for that. There's always something better that is worth so much more than whatever it is that you're giving up. So understand that when you give up addictions, you're only going to improve your life better. That first and foremost does help. We obviously all know, oh, stop doing this. I'm going to feel better. But have that mindset in your head of thinking, if I do this, then for the sake of Allah, it's going to help me so much more than I even realize. And it is hard and it's supposed to be hard. But that's why there's some steps that will help you in order to give up that addiction. First and foremost, you have to be able to seek repentance. Ask Allah for forgiveness. Tawbah. Understand that you're going to make mistakes. We're not perfect. None of us are perfect. We're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to sin. We're all going to falter. But the strong believer is the one who does the sin and understands that they have to ask Allah for forgiveness. So be sincere about it. Make tawbah. Understand that no matter how many times a mistake has happened, how many times you go back and fall back into the trap, Understand it is a way out with tawbah, with sincere repentance. Another form is by having prayer, salah, and supplication of du'a. And again, to make du'a for it, to ask Allah, Ya Rabb, O oh God, please help me with this situation. Please allow me to see the abundance in life and stay away from the wrong. You want to ask God for these things. You want to ask the creator of the literal universe to help you out with this task. Allah has made so many miracles happen and you don't think that Allah can help you? Be sure to ask Allah, be sure to make du'a to be better, and then take action in order to become better. And speaking of action, make sure you have accountability for your actions. So understand that you're the reason why something's going wrong. You can limit many things. For example, if you know you're addicted to your phone, you can set a limit. You can put it in a little box and a key and lock it and give the key to your mom or dad or your brother or sister, whoever it is. Whatever it is, try to find what's stopping you from getting to the next level. Eliminate that addiction. There's ways around it. Make sure you change the environment of whatever it is. If you're tired of seeing hypersexualized content, make sure you don't follow anything that can show you the hypersexualized content. If just being on the app itself brings you that content, don't use the app. It sounds really simple, but it's true. Find the root of the problem take it out and watch how your life changes. Sometimes you should talk to a professional as well, whether it be a therapist, whether it be someone who's been through the problem before, but understand that we all are gonna go through problems. There are ways in order to fix the problem, but understand that seeking guidance, seeking help from people and a support system is also really important. And having a support system allows you to have something to fall back on when you're feeling down when you want to go back into that addiction. And again, it doesn't have to be a professional, but it could be your community. It could be a brother, a sister, someone who cares about you, a friend that you could be open with, honest with, and actually have the conversation. Because again, the first step to getting better in any addiction is to know that you have a problem with this addiction. And again, addictions happen to all of us. But another way to eliminate the addiction, it sounds nuts, but fast from that, whether it be again, food, water, fast, yeah, but fasting from that addiction, trying culture, getting away from anything that reminds you of that problem. It does help just rip the bandaid off, but then making sure you have that community support, that support system of people that will keep you locked in so that you can become 
better and get away from that addiction. One thing that really helps is again, avoiding those triggers and temptations. If you know these group of friends are gonna make you drink or smoke or get into some naughty activities that you don't wanna get into, stay away from them. It's that simple. Understand that you have to have self-control. And then when you stay away from them long enough and then you are actually put back into that same experience in that same environment, you won't relapse because you have built that self-restraint, that self-control, even if you're around it, can you stay away from it? And again, at first, you have to just remove it cold turkey. You have to remove those temptations. Not removing the thing in itself 100% because again, sometimes cold turkey isn't the best way. But regardless, ripping off that band-aid of the temptation can be one of the best first steps that you can take. Make sure that you also educate yourself. Learn different tactics and ways to get through any addiction that you might have. Each addiction is a little bit different. So make sure scientifically you're looking at how to change it. Obviously I have the supplication to Allah and ask Allah for help and guidance, but go out of your way to try to find ways to stop an addiction. And I've been addicted to things before, but understanding how I've gotten over them has showed me, okay, it took the discipline. It took the time. It wasn't overnight. It was years. It might've been months. It might've been weeks. Whatever it is, it takes time. So understand that and be patient with yourself. Have sabr and understand that patience and constancy will allow you to get over that addiction, will allow you to get over that hurdle. And then in turn, inshallah, you'll be able to remove that addiction from your life once and for all. And if you know someone who's struggling with addiction, make sure you're there for them. Make sure you're compassionate and you're understanding. Because again, it might seem on the outside looking in, you're looking at them like, what is wrong with them? The answer is so simple. But when you're in this mindset, when you're in this toxic environment mentally, it is so hard to see the light. So understand that if you're someone who wants to help someone with addiction, that you're there for them, you're patient with them. You take one by one steps with them because again, it is hard. And if you're someone with the addiction, understand that you need to see that, understand that, and give the people that are giving you that time this sense of respect as well when they're trying their best. They might get a little impatient at times, but the number one thing is to be patient with yourself. Thank you guys again. Please sure to like, subscribe, share this to all your friends who may or may not be struggling with addiction. And if it's you yourself or you've gotten over an addiction, Please, I would love to know how you did it personally and leave it in the comments down below. I'll be sure to try to reply to as many people as possible because again, I look forward to seeing what you guys say because you have so many amazing and cool stories. So I'm looking forward to reading about them. And if there's anything that you guys need, please feel free to ask in the comments. This is a community here that I've been attempting to build and wanting to build because we got to be there for each other because sometimes we might not have someone. So ask questions, share your story. Someone might get inspired by it. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode here. Inshallah, I'll see you next week. See you later.